Today we're going to look at what class components are in React, how they are different to functional components and when to use which. Welcome to DevWord, my name is Seb. In this video we still have our app that works, we have our CRUD functionality, our filter and our cards here. And today we're going to have a look at what the difference is between functional components in React and class components. I'm also going to give you some special tips which I missed when I learned about functional and class components in React which are very very important so you don't get confused when you see a React component. And at the end of the video I'm also going to talk about when to use class components and when to use functional components. So here's the code on the left side you can see the functional components you already know from the previous videos and on the right side is the class components from React. And you can see it looks almost the same, but let's go over what exactly the differences are. So here in the functional component, we take in the props up here, for example. Whereas with the class components, the props are already in the component itself because it extends the react.component component. And you can also see here we directly return our JSX, so our HTML elements, let's say. And here we have to wrap the return into a render method. We'll talk more about the render method and all the lifecycle methods of the class components from React, but let's do that later in this video. Another difference is that we take in the props here as a parameter. We can take them in with object deconstruction, whereas here we call this dot props and then whatever kind of props we have. Because class components from React are also classes from JavaScript, so there we call this to reference this class. But that's really the difference in a nutshell. So here for a view component like these real estate cards, the difference is really not too big. So let's go to our app.js and see how the functions and methods are different. So here we are in our app.js. We can see we have the class here, app, that extends the react.component. And here we have the functional component, which is just called app. We still have the initial state, but you can see here const is missing. Because, of course, this is not a functional component anymore, this is a class. And in classes we don't define variables with const, let or var, so we can leave that out. And then here we have our React use state hooks, whereas here we have the constructor. We call something that is called super, which we need inside of our constructor if we extend our class. But don't worry about that too much at the moment, because we're going to get rid of that afterwards anyway. But let's continue here and then this is where we initialize the state. So this dot state and then we have our states here, which we in our functional components just have on this side. So what about constructor and super? So this is a thing that was used to before, if I'm correct, ES6 came out. But you don't really have to worry about that because what we can do is we can actually delete the constructor and the super and then we can delete this dot and if we save that the functionality is exactly the same thing as if we would have the constructor and the super so we can just leave that out and it's a little bit more condensed now so state here is a reserved keyword so you can call state let's say you wouldn't be able to call this state without conflicting the state in a class component and the state is used to as it already says manage state and these are all the variables inside of the state so if you remember in our use state hooks here in our functional component, for example, this listings is exactly the same as the listings we have here. The difference, of course, is that we also have a setter here. So the set listings, which is not in our state variable here. So how do we set the state of, for example, listings or is added? So let's go down here to our first method, which is handle query change. So all the methods we have here have the exact same functionality as here in our functional component, which we already know from the first two videos. Again, the only difference is that we don't have const prepending our name here. So let's check out the handle query change. And you can see the functionality is still the same. We have an if check here and then we set the query no matter if we have an e.target.value or not. So it's exactly the same functionality, but we set the state a little bit differently. So here we can just call set is filtered, which is this getter of the use state hook. But here in our class component, we have to call this, of course, before, because inside of a class, we have to say this before we call a method. And then this set state takes in an object as an argument where we can define which kind of value in the state we want to change to which exact value. And set state will recognize which of the states we want to change 
and keep all the other ones the same. So if we set is filtered true, then our state up here won't change except of course is filtered. But if we have some title here, this won't change. So we don't have to do something like that. Set state will automatically handle that. And that's pretty much it how we handle the set state method. So just to give you another example, if you go to handle the lead click here, we can see we set listings here to the new listings. And here we just set this, that state to the new listings. And the rest here stays exactly the same. Then a little tip I want to give you is you can see these methods here are arrow functions. And with class components from React, I really recommend using arrow functions because it will bind this. So if you go to the documentation here, we can see if we don't have an arrow function here as our method, we have sometimes, if you have an event listener, we have to this handle click, for example. So this is this method. And then we have to bind this. But with arrow functions, if we have arrow functions here as methods, we don't have to worry about that. So as I said, I really recommend using arrow functions with React class components. I will leave a link to these docs in the description down below. All right, the rest of the methods here is pretty self-explanatory. The only big difference that we have with class components compared to functional components is that we don't have hooks. So for example, we couldn't use the use state hook in a class component and neither we are able to use the use effect hook. So in the last video, we found that with the use effect hook, we can pretty elegantly manage state. So how would we do that in a class component? For that, we have these lifecycle methods. So here in the official docs of React, we can see the different lifecycle methods. This will show all the methods, but let's just focus on the most common ones. So mounting means when a component is built on the DOM. So first we have the constructor, then we have render, and then component did mount. So that means the component is now fully loaded on the DOM. And this is usually where we put in props or our state. So component did mount is very, very similar, but not completely the same if we have a news effect with an empty dependencies array. But for this functionality, we will use components did update. So when do components actually update? Components update when there is new props, when there is a set state method called, or where there is a force update called. Force update is not something you usually do. But of course, getting new props or a state change is very, very prevalent in React. So this is when usually the components update. And then this component did update will fire wherever a component updated, as I said, with new props or a new state. And then unmounting is the last. So if the component is removed from the DOM, this component will unmount will fire. So let's see that in action. So here we have component did update because in our app, we want that if our listings or our query change, we want to update the DOM. And if you remember in the last video, we could easily do that with our dependencies arrays. So whenever listings or query changed, this function will be called. And in our class component, we do that with component did update. So because if we, for example, change the filter here, our query state up here will change and that will trigger the component did update method. And whatever we put in here, let's say console log updated this will run. So let's try that out. So if you change something here, we can see updated will be called every time. And then we have an if check. Let's talk about that later. And inside here, if we have this.state.query, that means if we have something as a query here, so either Los Angeles or New York, because all locations is an empty string and this will return false here. So if it's true, so if we have a query, then we filter all of our listings, which come from this dot state. And then we set the state filtered listings to these new filtered listings array. So the exact same thing, which we do here, we check if there is a query and if there's a query, we set the set filtered listings to the filtered listings. And then here, the exact same thing. If we don't have a query, we set the state of filtered listings to an empty array, which is exactly the same thing we do here. So why should we have this if check? Here we want to actually check if listings and queries or if the state of listings and query actually changed. If they didn't change, we don't have to run this function. How we can do that is component did update takes in as a parameter previous props and previous state. 
So we can check from the previous state if the listings are equal to this.state.listings. So this would be the current listings array. And the same thing here for the query. This is the current query state. And the previous state is the state before the DOM has updated and called this component did update method. And that's how we are able to get a similar functionality like with the use effect hook, but just in class components. And down here we can see where we had the return here in our functional component. We have to wrap that in the render like I told you with the card component. And as we know now from here, render is also one of the lifecycle methods. So whichever JSX we want to display in our React app, we have to wrap that in our render component because that's one of the most important lifecycle methods. And the rest pretty much stays the same. So you can see there is not really a big difference. The only big difference is that you're not able to use React hooks in class components and lifecycle methods in functional components in React. So when should we use classes over functional components and functional components over classes? So I see it this way. Most of the time, basically, you should use functional components in React. It's a more modern and newer way of how to work with React. And I would really see I would only take class components if, for example, you would need specifically one of the lifecycle methods of the class components. So if you go back here, so here if you show all the lifecycle methods, we can see we have different lifecycle methods here, which in the rare cases we can't replicate with functional components. But I have to say I never came across that, so I use always functional components when I build apps with React. Then a little tip at the end, sometimes you will see component will mount, but be aware that this is depreciated. So you shouldn't use component will mount anymore, but sometimes you can see it in all tutorials or in all documentation, but just be aware, as I said, that this is depreciated. So this is pretty much it, what you have to know as a beginner about class and functional components. I hope this video helped. If you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.